Hello, and right now we'll be continuing our app and adding a navbar. We can go to our components folder over here, add a file called navbar.jsx and write RAFCE. If you didn't watch the previous video, to be able to do this, to write RAFC, you need to go to extensions and install this particular extension. This will give you a lot of snippets to make your coding experience much easier and faster. Another note is that all the names of the files and components should start with a capital letter. Otherwise, there will be issues and bugs with your code as React won't understand that it is a component. Now let's actually start creating our navbar. First of all, the wrapper div. In this div, we'll have the positioning of elements and we'll have the background color and size of the navbar. We can say w-screen. This means that the size of the navbar will always be the same as the user screen, no matter what device they use. Next, h-100 pixels, meaning the height will be 100 pixels. Next, we can add a background, for example, bg-blue-500. This will mean that the blue will be simply a medium blue. A bg-blue-200 will be a very light blue. bg-blue-900 will be a very dark blue. And for now, this is it. Let's import our navbar into our app.jsx component. We can simply write navbar. And as you can see, it recognizes it. We can press tab and it will automatically import our navbar into the app component. This might not work on applications with a lot of files, but on these short ones, it works perfectly. We can run our application by opening the terminal, by clicking view and terminal and writing npm run dev. This will run a local server on your computer. Control click into it. And here we have our navbar, just as intended. We will have three main elements inside of it. The name, like the main title, some links and a contact section. Just a note, none of these links will actually be clickable. This is simply a visual navbar. Later on in the course, we'll be adding actual links to it. The first element will be an H1, so a title. You can say web chain dev. Next will be a div, which will have three elements. Say about. Actually, we'll leave them empty for now because we'll be giving them styles later. And we can have a button over here. called contact. As you can see, the elements are now in a row. We don't want that. So we can say in the main div, like in the wrapper div, we can say flex, flex dash row. So all three of these elements, so the div, the H1 and the button will go in a row. This looks kind of weird because of this div, which is messing things up. So we can add items dash center. Items dash center means that all the items will be in the horizon on the vertical center of our application. So like this. By the way, if you're ever confused about style, you can go to this website, tellwincss.com slash docs. It will explain every single style. So let's say items dash center. And here it explains different things. Item dash center, item dash end, and many other things to do with items. You obviously can't remember every single Tailwind CSS class, 
So just go to this website, the documentation is very well written and is easy to learn if you are confused about anything. Next, we can add this part. We can add a P tag with a class name of text dash 20, 20 pixels. Yes. Then we can say about over here and copy all of this a few times. We can say product and YouTube, for example, it doesn't matter what you write here. And as you can see, these three things are in a column. We don't want that. We want them also to be in a row, which means we'll go to their wrapper div, not this one, because this is the main one, this one, and say flex flex dash row. And now they're in a row, but we want, don't want them all smushed up like this. So we can say gap dash 400 and 450 pixels like this. And we can add a gap between these ones. Let's say gap dash five. Also, we can make our web chain dev h1 bigger because it's the title. So you can say text dash 30 pixels. Also, we don't want it smushed up to the wall like this. So we can say margin left dash 10. And now this looks significantly better. We can also make the contact text 20 pixels. Text dash 20 pixels, just so. A final thing that I'll add is make this contact button actually look like a button. So we can say H dash 30 pixels, W dash 80 pixels, and BG dash blue dash 900. As you can see, we added the button, but it doesn't look particularly good. One reason is the edges. We can say rounded dash 10 pixels. Now the edges are rounded. Let's actually make the height a little better like this, 40 pixels. And now the button looks much better. We can even make the text white, as on this font, we can't really read it. Text dash white. Like this. So yeah, this is our basic navbar. In the future, we'll be creating more difficult and more complex components with Tailwind CSS.